We will have a Silvia Carrasco uh, who will join us on stage from uh, so CEO of Goldex. Hello, Silvia. How are you? Hi. Hello. How are you? Doing really well, uh, and I'm re I'm really glad to have you uh, at the event uh, talking about yeah how we can maybe like put API on top of gold mining and gold minting. So uh, <laughs> that that's really why we're really interested to, to have you there. We talk about digital transformation in open banking, open finance, open insurance. But yes, one industry has been being really, really old and maybe open just recently, thanks to a company like yours. So let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. So I invite you, you to share. To, your do, you want to, do you want to share with uh, the public very quickly your personal experience that you mentioned to me? Uh, how yeah. you want to buy gold. Yeah. Uh, I think that's so, interesting. It's very interesting. As, as an introduction, before you put your slide, yeah, uh, let's say 10 years ago, I wanted to buy gold, uh, physical gold, uh, uh, right? And and I tried, I called my banker, I called uh, like uh, some uh, potential, you know, uh, um, investment companies and say, no, no, I want to buy physical gold. And say, no, 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 you can't. It's really complex. You can only buy uh, like a, um, bonds or you know some specific products, but it was impossible to buy gold. It even the right to own gold, it's it was really complex, and and banks were never never being able to help me. So I bought some other stuff, uh, uh, tried to secure uh, uh, some savings. Uh, but yeah, it was yeah it was almost impossible at the time as a as a loan, really small and tiny investor to access. Uh, to the gold market, uh, so uh, so yeah, uh, but it seems uh, you are on the path of solving this. Uh, yes, so my presentation is not going to be very technical on the uh, on obviously on the IT side. I don't have an IT uh, background, even though I've been working with IT people for the last uh, twenty five years of my life, more or less. Um, so uh, the title says it all: unlocking gold investments with uh, APIs. Um, so very simple allocated physical gold is always in demand um uh, you said you wanted to buy gold yourself um uh COVID has uh really pushed the physical market uh there was a time during COVID that there were uh liquidity constraints because the dealers the gold dealers could not actually uh, uh get their hands into more gold and of course there were delivery issues with the bans uh, uh, of the security vans moving gold across uh, countries. Um, so uh, we can uh, definitely agree that uh, gold has been with us for thousands of uh, years and it will still be with us, hopefully, for a few thousands uh, uh, of years, uh, even though we want to be able to be here to see it. Um, just a little bit of uh, the, the gold uh, background so that you know, 40% of high earners have bought gold in the past 12 months. Um, that is a tremendous amount of people. Um, people sometimes think that the gold market is very small. They don't understand that it's actually bigger than S&P, uh, uh, NICE, uh, FTSE 100, uh, 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 daily volumes. Uh, I'm just highlighting here, four and a half billion daily traded uh, in London, in physical gold in London. If I also have to add uh, uh, the real derivative gold, which is unallocated gold, uh, the figure goes up to, I think, 20 billion uh, daily. 40% um, of year-on-year -year growth uh, in the last, uh, uh, in, during the last year. Uh, of course, COVID, as I said, played a massive uh, part in it. Uh, all this information comes from the World War Council, so it's not just me um, taking them out of the hat. So why gold? Well, because it's the ultimate storage uh, for, for wealth. Um, it's, uh, uh, you know, as I said, it's been with us for thousands of years. Just, just think that it's been with us uh, from, you know, the Egyptians, and it's gone through every famine, war, civil war, world war, etc., um, and, and catastrophes. And actually, during COVID, which was a, a catastrophe for, for the world, uh, has proved again uh, uh, its validity. 61% uh, of people trust more gold than fiat currencies. That is very big, especially with uh, the money printing machines that the, the central banks have uh, become and how they think, well, inflation is not a problem. Uh, and if it is, we'll print more money. Uh, but I think uh, history teaches us that we don't learn from history. And uh, I think 
uh, is one of the reasons why there is a further influx into gold investment, not just only because of the pandemic, but because of the current economic situation and the, and the uh, high inflation uh, that the world overall is suffering. Um, and then 44% uh, actually of people buy gold to manage uh, the risk. So effectively what people do is they, you know, they might have several investments and they're just uh, uh, putting some gold aside to protect themselves against uh, valuation, you know, inflation, uh, currency devaluation, etc. I mean, even the British pound, a very stable uh, 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 currency, uh, year on year over the last uh, 25 years has lost 50% of its value. So it loses up, the GDP loses about 5% value uh, uh, year on year. So I don't even want to think about all the other currencies who are, who are not as strong and stable as GDP. However, there is a problem. 48% of people who would like to buy gold, they think they, they don't trust the gold industry. They, they you know, they basically, uh, 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 you know, stop themselves because they don't know where to go, who to buy it from. They don't know, they don't trust. So it's funny that even when I speak to my mother these days, who's 89, and I say to her, my company deals in gold, she's like, oh, finally, I know what you are doing. Um, nevertheless, people still don't know uh, how to buy gold uh, as an investment. So all they do is they go on Google, they search how to buy gold, uh, they will have several dealers coming in advertising in Google Ads. Um, they don't know if their gold is real, they don't know if the price at which they are uh, being offered the gold is actually good or bad because they don't have any reference points. And usually dealers are pretty good at hiding uh, costs as well. And they don't even know where to start. That's why they usually start uh, uh, just with a Google search. Now, in Goldex, what we are doing is we've put this uh, uh, you know, plug and play service so that financial brokerage firms, financial firms, and now fully target, uh, targeting the fintech industry, um, uh, they, they can actually uh, easily integrate through our API or fixed connections uh, and offer the, the product to your own clients, they have something that the others don't have, which is trust. And that, as I said, is the biggest barrier the gold industry has. Um, I am a user of a, a very well-known app in the UK, it's called Revolut. Uh, I use them for uh, my effects. I use them to, you know, I'm in Spain at the moment, um, and I'm transferring money from my GDP account into a Spanish account, etc. And I trust them. Every time I put my card, it works. Every time I want to withdraw money, it works. Every time I want to send money to somebody, it works. Um, if I was going to buy gold, which they now offer, uh, and I couldn't know where to go, I would probably go with them. I know that they would probably be taking my liver and half of my kidney uh, because they are not the cheapest, but at least I know my gold is safe with them. And that's something that uh, the fintech community have above everybody else in the gold industry. However, even though they don't have that issue, they have the problem of how do I offer allocated gold? You know, it's still a massive uh, challenge for these uh, financial companies to do so. And that is exactly the problems that they have, which is in a, in a diabolical way, uh, one of the reasons why I started Goldex is because four or five years ago, I wanted to buy gold for myself, similar similar uh, situation as many uh, uh, told us. And I thought, where have these people been in the last 20 years of my life? I've set up the electronic trading systems for Credit Suisse and Man Financial, uh, and I still have to pick up the phone uh, to buy gold. Why, why is that? Um, so the dealer technology is extremely obsolete. Um, I would say 80% of them don't even have an API. It's as bad as that. Uh, they've never heard of FIX. Um, I hope that some of you understand what the FIX protocol is. It's the language used by financial institutions to, uh, to talk to each other. Um, and they don't even know what it is. Um, and typically extremely very poor APIs when they have some. Um, the other problem is liquidity issues. So we've seen liquidity issues uh, uh, during COVID, massive liquidity issues. And if I'm dealing with a company that has 10 million clients behind, they cannot just rely on a single source of liquidity because potentially they are expose, exposing themselves to uh, a very uh, uh, shortage in liquidity. Um, 
and furthermore, they don't offer them best execution because best execution is a policy that has to be complied in regulated assets, whereas uh, physical gold is not regulated. So there is no police, so everybody's having a jolly good time uh, in giving the execution price that they want. And then finally, if you try, if you're a company, you want to give gold, then you go mad because you have every dealer offers different prices, different quantities. Some of them force you to go minimum one gram, others you need to buy a full bar or you can't. Uh, different types of quality, etc. So it's a little bit of a, you know, uh, the same as for the retail client, for the fintechs or for the financial companies that want to offer the product. It's not necessarily easy and straightforward. So I say here, we have to do it again. I've done it twice. Um, uh, and basically, as I said, I was one of the founding members of Credit Suisse back in 2000. Uh, I've seen the entire change in electronic trading in equities and FX. Um, uh, we, I am one of the inventors of the FIX protocol at the time, uh, and also we created the first algorithmic trading tools uh, in the market. Um, and together with my team, similar profile, UBS uh, heads of electronic trading, etc. Uh, when I had that problem for myself, I contacted some of, uh, of my uh, ex-colleagues, competitors in the market, and I said, look, these guys are still working this way. I think we can do this uh, and just replicate what we've built in other asset classes. And that's exactly what we've done, uh, just doing it uh, for the gold market. I usually say it takes a few equity guys to change the gold market. Uh, they don't like that, but you know it's just the reality. So how, how does the platform work? Um, so on one hand, what we are doing is, first of all, we are not uh, a dealer. We don't own any gold for ourselves. We don't do prop trading. Uh, we are basically, uh, uh, you know, a, a platform, a trading platform, where we're just passing electronic messages. Um, on one hand, we have on the left hand side, you can see the dealers. We have 16 dealers to date, uh, and they are just uh, posting their best bid and offers. We are not an exchange. We operate as an RFQ model, so a request for price. Uh, so when we have uh, a client that requests a price, we just uh, um, uh, do an RFQ to all the dealers. We receive uh, the dealers' prices and we consolidate it into the best uh, best bid, best offer from all of them. And then uh, within the platform, we have, as I said, the multiple dealers uh, with the multiple prices that each of them uh, generate, and that of course, generates a big liquidity pool uh, that uh, that solves the liquidity issues that potentially clients have. Um, we've built the first smart order router in the uh, gold uh, uh, marketplace. Um, a smart order routers are, you know, very vanilla, very well used in equities and in effects. Uh, when I speak to my previous uh, colleagues from the industry, they and I tell them all oh, we're doing a smart order router. They look at me like, so what? We did that 20 years ago. And I said, well, but I'm doing it in gold. Um, uh, that means, we, of course, as I said, we're offering best execution policy in a non-regulated market. Um, and that means also we offer the best price in and the best price out. Um, bear in mind that if you deal with a single dealer, they usually give you a very good price in. But because the gold sits with them, what usually happens is that they will give you a very bad price out. Um, and you know we are trying to be fair uh, uh, making it uh, best price in and out. Uh, we hold the gold for our clients. Uh, we just do the vaulting and insurance for them so they don't have to worry about that. Um, and then, very interesting, uh, gold dealers usually request companies to be uh, pre-funding uh, their position, which is unworkable for them, uh, or put in margin requirements. We have got rid of them. We settle on T plus one as if we were an equity. You bought 10, you sold six, you are long for so give us the money for four uh, the following day. Um, the integration is done through, as I said, APIs or FIX. Uh, the API uh, is a RESTful API, and uh, and basically it's composed of micro uh, uh, microservices with all the different modules. Everything is proprietarily built um, from scratch, and uh, basically the the. You know, the, the interesting thing about it is that we control the market data, we control the smart order router, the portfolio management, the ledgers, uh, et cetera. And, um, and we can just uh, very swiftly move around the components if, uh, if it's needed uh, to do so. 
Um, so here again, I'm, I'm just uh, telling you that the, the company itself is an exchange grade tech. It's not different to the one I built for Credit Suisse. It's not different to the one I built for Man Financial uh, at the time. Um, as I said, you know, multi dealer hub, 16 dealers plus, 24 7 uh, uh, open uh, liquidity. Clients can trade down to a penny or down to a cent. Uh, we don't put any minimums uh, or maximums for the clients. Um, as I said again, the smart of the router is the first uh, in the market, always uh, uh, securing the best price in, in every single trade. And then the vaulting, as I said, we just take care of, of the entire thing. Um, there is, as far as we know, there is nobody else who has uh, a multi uh, a smart of the router platform uh, uh, that is easy to integrate uh, via an API. <laughs> As I said, our clients are integrating uh, in six, you know, four to eight weeks. It depends pretty much on their side uh, because they usually have to do some changes. Uh, we sit behind the scenes. Uh, we are not known by their own clients. They keep total control of their uh, customers. And uh, very important for us is the security. And we've gone through massive amount of uh, encryption levels to make sure that, uh, uh, you know, the the the, the actual uh, platform is very secure. We are hosting everything on AWS. Uh, we don't have any physical um, uh, servers. Um, for them, it's an ideal solution because at the end of the day, they, they have a full-on solution. Uh, their customers don't have any concerns. They trust them. They can tell them they're buying the physical gold. Uh, it's investment grade. Um, they are offering it at the best price to their own client. And ultimately, the gold always belongs to the client. So if either Goldex or one of our dealers or even the fintech involved uh, uh, was going to go into liquidation, the legal ownership always belongs to the end user. That's the massive difference between physical allocated gold and an ETF or, uh, uh, or uh, you know, a, a derivative and allocated gold, which is a balance sheet uh, gold. Uh, doing uh, the, the fintechs uh, uh, are obviously interested because they need to diversify. Uh, the world of the fintechs has totally changed in the last 12 months. They must offer everything, every product. Up to a year ago, they would say to me, Sylvia, I already offer them an ETF. Why should I offer gold, uh, physical gold? Well, let me tell you, I've not actually heard that in the last three months, not a single time. Um, they know they have to bring more products and uh, and they basically cannot sit still and uh, gold especially after covid and with the financial uh, economic situation is very much every day on the newspapers uh, and they know that the retail plans read the newspapers uh, for them is is a great way of generating revenue fintechs uh, they have to generate revenue they are not different to any other company at some point they have to monetize the clients uh, gold is one of these few asset classes where there is still very large margins. Um, so they can still really make uh, uh, substantial revenues uh, because the commission uh, is still very high uh, when it comes to buying gold. Um, and as I said, you know, we are experts on the B2B. Uh, we've done this before, um, but ultimately we're behind the scenes and they keep controlling their branding. And uh, what we do is just power the marketplace that they use. Just very quickly, uh, where we are today. Um, bear in mind that we finished the institutional trading uh, uh, API system uh, on the, at the beginning of April. Uh, since then, we are already integrating the first three uh, B2B, B2C, uh, B2B2C partners. Uh, so are just uh, uh, finalizing those integrations. Uh, we have 11 more companies, very, very well known names, actually in the US and in the UK, uh, that have already agreed to integrate. Uh, bear in mind, again, as I said, that I've only been speaking to people for the last two months. So in two months, uh, uh, it's actually uh, very interesting to see how keen they are to offer the product. Um, just a combined uh, user base of these uh, companies, uh, um, you know, uh, will be at least 20 million. So we will be reaching 20 million retail investors uh, via them. In 2022, I am being extremely uh, um, conservative. Uh, but I'm pretty sure that we will reach over 30 partners, uh, companies integrated at the end of the year, uh, combining more than 60 million uh, uh, retail customers. 
and uh, hopefully we'll do a series A because we've done all this and we still have not done a series A. Um, so we've always managed to build everything with limited resources, but at the same time, uh, we've done it before, you know, a couple of times. So we, we pretty much know what we are doing, which is always uh, uh, a very important way to save money. Um, I hope it helps. Uh, as I said, my presentation was never going to be on the technical side. It's a little bit uh, to show how technology, uh, as you all know, technology is, is uh, capable of offering products that before uh, were not possible. I'm, I'm a, a great believer also in, uh, uh, in medical tech um, because I see how important uh, technology is, uh, is, uh, uh, is at, you know, helping advance uh, uh, human beings in, in other areas. So gold is definitely not life saving, but, um, but, you know, we're just helping people being able to, uh, safeguard, uh, their wealth and, uh, in an effective way and without having to be a millionaire and having to buy bars that cost, uh, you know, a hundred grand. So, uh, if you have any questions, please, uh, feel free to fire them. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Sylvia. We have some comments. Uh, uh, one of the comments is like, uh, it's really uh, great to uh, have a, to talk about gold in a developer conference and not about Bitcoin. So that was, uh, that was, that was one of the, one of the comments we have. So uh, uh, you explained a little bit, but like, how does that work? You know, these minting gold companies, like how they, they used to have no IT system, probably, you know, they are 1000 year old company or stuff like that. You know, so how you enable them to have an IT system that can be open? Well, um, the my my so my biggest challenge has been to find gold dealers who actually have a way of posting the prices in our system. As crazy as it sounds, um, you quite rightly are uh, speaking about a thousand year old company. When we spoke, I said to you, do you know that the Royal Mint, which is over a thousand years old, does not have an API? Uh, they've only had a thousand years to develop one, um, but you know, obviously it's taking, they're taking their time. Um, uh, now for them, I can't do anything. So, uh, I have them, for example, as an example of them saying, I would love to be able to participate in your platform. And I said, well, what do you want me to do? And you're not going to send me your prices on a, uh, with a pigeon. So I'm sorry, I can't do anything. Um, however, which is great for me because uh, that means that they cannot service the, the, the financial institutions. Um, on the other hand, we are dealing with fintech companies. We are dealing with, uh, uh, you know, with uh, financial broker uh, brokers that have the technology. As I said, they use Fix, or the fintech uh, companies have uh, good technology. That's why they are fintechs, and they move very fast. They actually move fast because they have to. It's ingrained in their DNA to actually offer more products, be better than anybody else. Um, but as for the gold dealers, how I can't do anything until they uh, until they don't pull their finger out and you know decide to to at the very minimum uh, have a, 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 a method to actually post prices. Yeah, so if you don't have an API for your first 1,000 years, <laughs> why would you have one for the 1,001, right? <laughs> well, you know, I remember very specifically how about five years ago, this company uh, that you're referring to, uh, they went full on on the UK press saying that they were selling gold through an app uh, and how revolutionary it was. And I remember saying, wow, they've just discovered the www dot. <laughs> um, you know, and I said, well done, guys. I actually spoke to one of them and said, well done, well done. You, you've actually just learned that there is something called the World Wide uh, uh, Net. Um, look, it's, as I said, it's good for me. Um, it's good for, the, for our business. I'm seeing this explosion on the interest. Um, and you know what? The, I spoke to somebody in the oil industry, very smart guy, New York guy, actually. And, and what, the first thing he said to me was, Sylvia, I don't compete with anybody, because I don't have competitors. Uh, I I have I don't fight competition because nobody is as good as we are, and they are very good. Um, I have to fight with complacency. And I said, funny you say this because I cannot agree more. Um, look, 
it's uh, it's just the way it is. Uh, hopefully, uh, one day they will uh, uh, wake up and smell the coffee. I really would love them to copy me and copy the gold decks everywhere. That means that it's worth copying us. Yeah, and this is why we wanted to invite you at uh, this APRS New York uh, event, um, even if it's online, the way we could have you there is, is, yes, is to show that, yeah, fintechs can have many flavors, uh, can address uh, many, uh, many uh, niche, for at least gold is not a niche, definitely. It's a niche now on the fintech market, but it's uh, one of the biggest assets to invest. And yes, and it was also to say that, that yes, the API mindset and the API models are colonizing, you know, uh, um, markets that 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 can be used, but that was completely trapped, completely captured into legacy systems or or legacy mindset, and now that can be open. And you are one of these openers uh, for the gold market. Exactly. Um, um, funny, funny enough, you you are talking about uh, crypto. Um, we just published uh, an article. You can go on our website and read it. Um, it's uh, quite interesting because whereas before there was this. Um, uh, Inverted correlation between inverted correlation between cryptos and gold, and they were like antagonists. Uh, we are now seeing that there is a massive correlation between the two of them. Um, so these bad vibes between the two, the gold backs and the and the crypto kids, if I want to call that a name, uh, has pretty much gone, and we are actually seeing uh, the crypto people also have positions in gold and gold people also have positions in crypto and then of course moving from one to another uh, and that's one of the reasons why the fintech companies now are uh, you know what they are doing is they are going first equities second crypto third gold and and that is the roadmap that they all have in mind for the next uh, you know 12 to 18 yep. months Thank you very much, Sylvia, and we'll be glad to have you at APIs London. Uh, we were <laughs> closer to you are, to you are uh, talking about that. Thank you very much uh, you. Uh, for this. If you want to know more, you can go and check Goldex, uh, and if you want to invest on Gold by APIs, and and.